Yes! You call it a smash and grab. I think it was better than that. Hello everybody and welcome back to Very Biased Opinions. It's time for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, the Yellows travelled to Ipswich. Going straight into the team news, there's only one change for Oxford United. Goran came back into the side after his two-match suspension. Sykes dropped out. I think he's played every game that I can think of recently, so he deserves a little bit of a rest. Strong Oxford side, obviously still missing Massinho, still going to be out for a while, but... A reward for the side that absolutely hammered Wimbledon 5-0 on Tuesday night. Ipswich also got a big win in their last game. They won 4-1 against Burton, but have been on a bad run. In fact, both sides haven't been in great form until their last game. Ipswich have been seemingly at the top of the league all season. have really dripped down to be outside the playoffs now. Um, so... Worrying times for them. I'm sure their fans are going to be worried that they've messed up the start of their season. But they've still got an excellent side when you look at it. Including ex-Oxford's Luke Garbutt. The weather ruined the um, occasion last time out. It ended 0-0. Uh, it was a game that nearly got abandoned. But it got played on. So that really doesn't give you a idea of how these two sides fared against each other. But... Anybody that thinks this is going to be easy is crazy. Both these sides really, really need a win. They're not, apart from the last game, they're not in great form. So I can see this one being pretty cagey. But I do fancy Oxford to get something out of it. We are playing quite well, or have done in the last two or three games. And it was Oxford who got the job done. Back-to-back -back wins in the league. It feels really good. It was a hard-fought win, make no mistake about it. At times... Ipswich completely outplayed Oxford, certainly in the first half. But it was Oxford who had the one clinical moment in the game. And it ended up Ipswich Town nil, Oxford United 1. So the game was extremely scrappy in the first half. Uh, not many chances to think of. I'll definitely say Ipswich were the better side. I'll say that flat out for the large majority of this first half. And they only got stronger as the first half went on. Oxford just could not get in any rhythm whatsoever. They're passing. They just couldn't keep all the ball, basically. Everything we seemed to get seemed to be a long ball, which was either chased by Holland or Brown or Taylor. But... They did defend well. They were resolute in defence. They didn't give away anything to Ipswich. I mean, Ipswich will probably say they were wasteful and should have taken chances. But I think Oxford defended really well as a team. And Eastwood was very solid in goal as well, making a few good saves. But it was looking like a backs-to-the-wall job. Can we get into half-time at nil-nil? But with their one bit of quality... In the first half, Oxford took the lead. Probably the first time that we strung two or three passes together, but it was an excellent move, which cut Ipswich open. Ruffles got it into Brannigan. He had space. He got to the edge of the box. He fed it out to Henry out wide, who squared it for Taylor. Taylor was unmarked. He took a touch and just banged it into the net. 1-0 Oxford. We didn't deserve it, but we'll take it. At the start of the second half, you were expecting an Ipswich backlash. And it happened for about five or ten minutes. So certainly the start of the second half, Oxford were under pressure, no doubt about it. It seemed like it was corner after corner and scramble after scramble. We really needed Eastwood to be in fine form, which he was. And everybody would just seem to be on it. Yes, I would say... We got a little bit of the rub of the green, like the balls fell to us at the right time. People got their leg in the way of things. But Oxford, I think, deserved their luck. And after that 10 minutes, Oxford started to really not control the game, but they were certainly a lot more in it than they were in the first half. Had a lot more chances, creating a lot more um, pressure for Ipswich on the break. And we had periods where we did what we did a lot at, um, this season, where we were winning the ball back in good areas. Certainly a much stronger showing from Oxford in the second half. We're not really a side that plays what we have, we hold. So I'd always expect Oxford to be always forward thinking and looking for that second goal. And they certainly were. And that certainly helped break up the flow of the game. Because if it was just going to be backs to the wall defending for the whole 45 minutes, I'm sure Ipswich would have scored. And surprisingly, for it being quite an open second half, there was only one goal. And it did end up 1-0 to Oxford United. The game got a little bit heated at the end. In fact, Ipswich just lost their rag. I mean... Halfway through the second half, we've been there before where teams have, that we should beat um, have been to the Kassam or the Manor Ground and Oxford fall behind. The crowd gets frustrated. The crowd got very frustrated on Ipswich today. You could sense it that every time a, a misplaced pass or a bad touch, the crowd were right on top of the players. This spill over in the final minutes where Caden Jackson stamped on Dickey. Wasn't too 
bad, but it was bad enough. It shouldn't you shouldn't do it. And so he got a red card. There were a flurry of bookings at the end. I think Dicky missed out on a booking though, which is good. So he doesn't get suspended, which is excellent news. And it ended uh, one nil to Oxford. Uh, we brought Mackey on at the end. That's the sort of player we need. That's why we need Mackey in the side to come on and just bully and hustle and harry and be a nuisance in the final 20 to 25 minutes of a game. So Oxford win it by a goal to nil and what a fantastic victory. All the talk and doom and gloom around the club has now gone away. We can thoroughly enjoy this victory. Taylor's back in the goals as well. It's exactly what you need from Taylor. He's there in the right place. If you can just get the ball into him, he's going to score hatfuls of goals. But let's give him a little bit of credit for the other side of the game and indeed for all of Oxford because I said they defended well and that doesn't just mean the back four in Eastwood. They really defended well as a team and a lot of that came from the likes of Taylor and the likes of Brown and Holland who really put a shift in. But like really like chased and harried and hustled and everybody really played their part to defensively in this Oxford United win. So all of a sudden the playoffs look back on and it's not season over. Enjoy it Oxford fans. We've got two winnable but not guaranteed games coming up against Accrington and against Southend. So who knows where we're actually going to end up when we thought February we were, we were going to be dead and buried. That'll do it for this review. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. It helps us out so much on the channel. And if you like the content on the channel, hit subscribe and make sure that you hit the notify bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'll be back very soon for another review. And remember, if you're looking for detailed football analysis, you're probably in the wrong place.